Cynthia Abelez, and I'm going to be talking about the Petrie case. The case I have is Part A. The first question is, why is the T-bond return in Table 1 shown to be independent of the state of the, of the economy? It, it does not matter the state of the economy for the T-bond rate. No matter the state of the economy, the Treasury will redeem the bills at par. Part B, is the return on a one-year T-bond risk-free? T-bonds have low risk. It all depends on the duration of the bond. The longer the term, the more, it is, the more it is sensitive to fluctuation of interest rates. Second question, calculate the expected rate of return on each of the four alternatives listed in Table 1. And based solely on the expected returns, which of the potential investments appears best? So for each return, the T-bond, the rate of return I got was 8%, and the standard deviation is 1.8778E, basically zero. And the rate of return for TECO is 13.5%, standard deviation is 0.11715. For Gold Hill, the rate of return is 8.8%. And then for S&P, it is 15%. And then standard deviation for Gold Hill is 0 0.09086. And for S&P 500, it's 0 0.16432. And the coefficient of variation, which is risk over return, for T-bond is 0. For TECO is 0.8678. For Gold Hill is 1.032. For S&P 500 is 1.09. Based solely on returns, 15% return through S&P 500 would be the best choice. Next question would be, now calculate the standard deviations and coefficients of variation of returns for the four alternatives, which I did already. What type of risk do these statistics measure? The two types of risk the statistics show is standard deviation and coefficient of variation. The standard deviation is a measure of how spread out numbers are. It is a measure that is usually that is used to quantify the amount of variation of dispersion of a set of data. The coefficient of variation is a standardized measure of dispersion of a probability distribution or frequency distribution. Next question, or part B of three, is the standard deviation or the coefficient of variation the better measure? Standard deviation is best used when determining an absolute measure of risk, but for this case, there is different investments with different average returns, so it would be better to use the coefficient of variation because it's better for determining a relative measure of risk. 3C says, how do the alternatives compare when risk is considered? T-bonds look the most favorable when talking about risks. T-bonds have 0% standard deviation and a zero coefficient of variation. After T-bonds, TECO looks second best relative to risk with a standard deviation of 11.72% and a coefficient of variation of 0.8681. Next question. Suppose an investor forms a stock portfolio by investing $10,000 in Gold Hill and $10,000 in TECO. Part A. What would be the portfolio's expected rate of return, standard deviation, and coefficient of variation? So the return would be 8 point, we start off with 8.8%, 13.5%. For beta, we use 1.03, and for TECO for beta, we use 0.86 to get an expected return of 11.2%, the standard deviation is 2.89%, and the coefficient of variation is 0.2592. Next part, for B, how does this compare with values for the individual stocks? In the portfolio return, TECO has a lower return of 11.2% rather than their individual return of 13.5%, so the portfolio return is less risky. Gold Hill has an individual stock value of 8.8% compared to the portfolio value of 11.2%. The standard deviation for TECO is 11.72% and standard deviation for Gold Hill is 9.09% compared to the portfolio standard deviation of 2.89%. What characteristic of the two investment make, of investments makes risk reduction possible? One characteristic that can make the portfolio less risky is the fact that it is diversified. Whenever you want to be less risky, you should be diversifiable. The two, invest the two investments are also negatively correlated. So one can be down and the other one will be up, making it less risky. What do you think would happen to the portfolio's expected rate of return and standard deviation if the portfolio contains 75% Gold Hill, if it contains 75% TECO? So for this, I calculated that Gold Hill at 75% and TECO at 25%, would, the expected rate of return would be 
and vice versa, the expected rate of return would be 12.3%. For Gold Hill at 75% and Teco at 25%, the standard deviation would be 6.89% and the coefficient of variation would be 0 0.69029764. And for Teco 75% and Gold Hill at 25%, the standard deviation would be 4.48% and the coefficient of variation would be 0.363. Now consider a portfolio consisting of $10,000 in TECO and $10,000 in the S&P 500 fund. What, would this portfolio have the same risk-reducing effect as the Gold Hill TECO portfolio considered in question 4? No, it would not because the two are positively correlated, unlike in question 4 where they are negatively correlated. The correlation is greater in this portfolio than the other because the risk-reducing effect is much lower than the one in TECO. Construct a portfolio using TECO and the S&P 500 fund in Excel to substantiate your answer. So for that, I got the expected rate of return for 14.3% and the standard deviation, I got 14.06% and the coefficient of variation is 0.987. Suppose an investor starts with a portfolio consisting of one randomly selected stock. 6A. So what would happen to the portfolio's risk if more and more randomly selected stocks were added? Adding additional stocks would decrease the risk of the portfolio, but the expected rate of return would remain the same. What are the implications for investors? The implication for investors are, the must, are that they must look at the investment as a whole rather than the individual investments. It is better to, to have a combination of positively correlated and negatively correlated stocks to improve their portfolio. Do portfolio effects impact the way investors should think about the riskiness of individual securities? Yes, they should become well diversified to eliminate the risk that is diversifiable in turn will only leave market risk in the portfolio. Would you expect this to affect companies' costs of capital? Yes, or wait, sorry. Would you expect this to affect companies' costs of capital? Yes, because the company can have a stock with a low rate of return and another stock with a higher return, which will cause their rate of capital to increase or decrease, depending on the rate of return the individual stock gets. Explain the differences between total risk, diversifiable risk, and market risk. Total risk includes market risk and diversifiable risk. Diversifiable risk is the risk that is associated with a specific company and can be diversified away. Market risk cannot be diversified because it is the risk related to the market. Assume that you choose to hold a single stock portfolio. Should you expect to be compensated for all of the risks that you bear? No, because investors don't get compensated for the higher risk of a single stock. For number 7, I calculated the coefficients of variation to be 0.7x plus 0 0.027, and the R squared would be 0.9961 for TECO. For the T bond, it would be Y equals 0 0.08, and R squared would be 0. And for Gold Hill, it would be Y equals negative 0.3867, plus 0.152, and R squared would be 0 0.7109. These lines are called the lines of best fit. The regression lines are called value lines, where slope is the beta, which measures the sensitivity of a stock in relation to the market. The difference between the expected rate and predicted rate is the difference between the plots on the graph and the regression curve. And then I uh, calculated the regression analysis through Excel. For number A, I got cap M to be 8% plus 15% minus 7% times beta, which is 0.6, and the cap M I got for TECO is 12.2%, and TECO is a greater investment because it has a greater rate of return than the expected rate of return, and the expected rate of return was 13.5%. What would happen to TECO's required rate of return if inflation expectations increased by 3 percentage points above the estimate embedded in the 8% risk-free rate? If the inflation expectation went up 3%, then TECO's re required rate of return would as well. It would go from 12.2% to 15.2%. Now go back to the original inflation estimate where uh, the risk rate equals 8% and indicate what would happen to TECO's required rate of return if investors' risk aversion increased so that the market risk premium rose from, 8, from 7% to 8%. 
If market risk premium increased 1% from 7% to 8%, then the required rate of return would increase to 12.8%. So it would be 8% plus 8% times 0.6, which would equal 12.8%. If market risk premium increased by 1%, then, the, yeah, 12.8%. Now go back to the original conditions and assume that Teco's beta rose from 0.6 to 1. What effect would this have on the required rate of return? If beta rose from 0.6 to 1, Teco's required rate of return would reach 15%. So it would be 8% plus 15% minus 8%. So that comes out to 15%. What is the efficient markets or what is the efficient markets of hypothesis? What impact does this theory have on decisions concerning the investment in securities? Efficient markets of hypothesis states that stocks are always in equilibrium. The impact this can have on decisions concerning the investment security is that it is saying investors can never beat the market. Is it applicable applicable to real assets such as plant and equipment? It is not applicable because the concept does not consider plant and equipment. What impact does the EMH have on corporate financing decisions? Since the stocks are fairly valued because its price it is a reflection of public information which affects corporate financing decisions, should Jake Taylor be considered concerned about the EMH when he consider, considers adding to his staff of security and analysts? EMH seems to be working, so Jake could consider EMH. He should add a staff of security analysts that know about the concept. Uh, not, notwithstanding the value line report, suppose Teco's long-term debt ratio decreased during the period 1982 through 1992. Further, suppose this ratio was projected to continue decreasing in 1993 and beyond. What impact would this have on Teco's riskiness, hence its beta and required rate of equity? If long-term debt had dis decreased from 1982, cost of debt, cost of equity, required rate of return, and beta would also decrease. This essentially would make Teco less risky. And that would be the end of my report. Thank you.